please, all the channels. Uh, as Steven member, I'm a member of RICS. I <coughs> decided to devote my time to get engaged with the BRI question, understand it better, and try to promote information here in Sweden wherever I can to get a better understanding among Swedes. So even if this topic today is about Africa, I think it's good for you, all of you to get a knowing about what's happening in Sweden and Swedish view of BRI, similar to what Turi just presented. So starting with one point, the minimal reporting of BRI by the Swedish media is very seldom mentioned. And in fact, uh, if you look into the state media or TV, TV, state TV, uh, last time I heard about BRI there, it was uh, from May, when they mentioned that was a congress in, in China, celebrating the second year of BRI, development of meetings. And they said it was a BRI federal role initiative meeting in, in China. Critics spoke about the death plan. And that was a news message. And uh, I think that uh, it's quite misleading to even bring up that kind of news, because that is not news, that is propaganda. Another thing is BRI is primarily recognized by uh, Scandinavian freight traders who would trade and use their new roads, develop, and get the benefit of it. And third, that there are no insight at all that the Belt and Road Initiative is significantly more than just transportation of roads. But there are exceptions, and the exception is the global Swedish company which already participate in the BRI in Europe, in Asia, and in Africa as well. I go back to understand a bit about Swedish. Uh, view of this, I think is to start with Sweden as a member of the United Nations and as well European Union. The United Nations was formed in 1946 and Sweden joined in 47. Similar, the European Union was formed in 93 and Sweden joined 1995. Characteristic of Sweden is following. Sweden is a loyal and strong supporter of both those organizations that act in accordance with the decision taken by the EU. And that means that Sweden prefers to have the discussion within the organization as such, but after the decision of what has come out of this, they act according to that. This autumn, Sweden, the Swedish government presented a news word, Swedish China strategy, and not sure also in relation to Bay. BRI. And it was a paper, a lot of pages, but I think that the most important part of that could be read in the beginning. The government approach to China is based on the European Union China strategy from 2016 and describes how the EU, European Union strategy is implemented naturally. So it's nothing else than just European Union's view. So not to talk about Sweden China strategy so much. Looking into Europe and the Belt and Road Initiative, so far 26 European countries have signed up the Memorandum of Understanding with China on the Belt and Road Initiative. And as you see on the red map there, the east part is completed. Free part, not contained it yet, is on the west side. If you look into European members of the European Union, 16 out of 28 have signed the Memorandum of Understanding with BRI. Furthermore, Finland has signed it with China to join the declaration appreciating the BRI. And similar, France has signed with China a joint declaration welcoming BRI. It's important to have that in mind when we talk about the European strategy, that we have actually 18 countries here that have a view on this, and a positive view of it. So in fact, there are no legal issues that pre 
prevent the Swedish government to sign the Memorandum of Understanding with China with respect to BRI. Unfortunately, it's only a political wish will that is missing. So that's a shame. Europe has its own plan for infrastructure with respect to a network of roads and railways and so on, that is called TNT. And it's quite a mess to, uh, to see. It's a long time plan. And it actually, it links up on different places with the Benta Road initiative and plan for this road as well. So it could be in some way harmonized with that. But one strange thing with this picture, if you look at this map, it covers all 28 member states of the European Union. But if you look in the north, two countries have been cut more or less in the half, and that's Sweden and Finland. I, dare believe, I don't believe, actually, that that could be the case if you talk about Spain, Portugal, Italy, and uh, except so. No way. But Sweden and Finland, mm -hmm. that was the situation. I think we could look a little bit above <coughs> that. Sorry. Oh. So above this line, which was the top of the map of the TNT, you have 60% of Swedish land area, and approximately 80% of the land area in Finland, which was not at all connected in the right way to the TNT. If you look into the northern part of Sweden, uh, focus on natural resources, you find that hydropower electricity, 90% of that is produced in the northern part of Sweden. And productive woodland is about 50%, and with respect to mining, it's 100%. So here we have a lot of natural resources. So in one way or another, needs to go down. And I can tell you, similar natural for Finland also, with it, more or less 100% of their woodland. But that is not part of the transport corridors in Europe. <coughs> Looking to the mining in this, uh, Sweden, and the mines are in the red circle in the red top there. Uh, the value of that, when they come up to the ground, is about 2.5 billion euro a year, the value of the production. But that value increases all the way by, by processing further on, before it reaches final customer, being in Sweden, Europe, or elsewhere. So, given that information and understanding, it's not just question about transportation from A to B. It's actually more like a river that creates growth along the way. And that should be, we talk about infrastructure and the corridors, it's economic corridors, corridors that create growth. Not surprisingly, in a joint request to the European Union, Sweden and Finland have applied that the Botnia corridor, which you see in the pink dot mark on the top here, should be included in the European TNT network. If approved, 20% of that cost will be covered by the European Union. Sweden, as such, needs to add both north house as well as east-west corridors in order to get efficient connection to the new silk roads. And the obvious point is marked on red here. And you see one of the red uh, line up there uh, to Kirkenes, which uh, Tore mentioned before. But if you look into the Swedish national plan, it's called the National Transport Plan for Sweden for the next ten, coming 10 years, none of this is mentioned. Not at all. Even that all these changes are like changing in the Europe, Asia, whatever, with the Belt Road Initiative. Nothing is mentioned in the transportation plan. Not, nothing about connection to other countries. Just simply within Sweden. And approximately about 60 billion, U, 60 billion Swedish crowns a year that will be spent, but mostly into maintenance to keep up with the present state of the road, railway, and so on, and remove some bottlenecks. But unfortunately, no real view of making infrastructure and connection.
information. I don't know why, why but uh, it might be that we have some experiences from major infrastructure projects in Sweden that uh, make a scale or whatever. Those are, first of all, final cost is much higher than planned. Much longer time to complete than planned. And final <coughs> result, nevertheless, more often is disappointing. And I can give you some examples of that. A railway tunnel was to be drilled under Hallandsås in the western part of southwest of Sweden. That was extended for several years before competition. And I guess that they get the figure that some, uh, you mentioned the figure in the beginning of what it would cost, <coughs> reality would be 10 times. Presently, we are also building a, a highway bypass in Stockholm, far before Stockholm. And it's just a giant project, it's two years into it. But already we have been getting information that we'll be able to postpone two additional years and it will cost an additional billion Swedish crown to complete. At top of the crown, that will be the new Karolinska Sjukhuset, <laughs> new Karolinska Hospital. Somebody mentioned buy one hospital, paid for three, but less capacity than before. It's actually written on that, unfortunately only in Sweden. The headline of this book, The Sick Hospital. <coughs> Having that in mind, that we should say that Sweden is uh, on top of building infrastructure and do it in a good way. But there are ways to learn from others. So, BRICS proposal for Sweden, that Sweden should join the BRI, and a larger infrastructure project use the vast experience and benefits offered by the Belt and Road Initiative. Furthermore, by joining the BRI, Sweden can have create better living conditions in the country that joins. <coughs> For those of you who would like to get some more information, you are welcome to visit our website, BRICSSweden.org. And I'm happy to say that you're also welcome to download a new BRI, BRI report from BRICS, published as of today. And that's, and that's about 25 pages, which I can guarantee that you, that you get better understanding of the Belt and Road Initiative, get an example, good discussion points, both from Africa, Asia, as well as from Sweden and Europe. So you're very welcome to those. And representative from the other different panels are there, a copy of, one copy for each panel is placed also on the table before you enter.